So my name is Radhika Ravirala. I'm a specialist solutions architect at uh, AWS, and I focus primarily on our analytic services such as EMR, Glue, Athena, and Lake Formation. So in this demo session, I will be talking about how to upgrade your Glue data permissions into a Lake Formation model. And so I'll give you a quick uh, uh, tour of uh, what the steps involved are and how you can easily uh, go through this process. So we'll begin with a, a quick intro to Lake Formation authentication and authorization model. So, so this picture must be familiar to a lot of you if you're working on the AWS environment. If you want to make a call to a, any AWS services uh, via an API, you need to be authenticated. And for authentication, you can use the secret, uh, secret key and access key, or you can federate use, uh, yourself from your Active Directory, from your on-premise environment. And once you authenticate yourself, you need to authorize uh, uh, for the actions that you'll be performing on uh, the resources in AWS. And uh, when, you, when you think about the lake formation model, IAM still uh, authorizes all the requests with respect to API calls that you make. However, it also provides uh, some fine-grained uh, access control to your data assets, mainly metadata and data, so that you can control uh, access to your data at a much uh, granular level. And so we'll take a look at how that process looks like. So if you think about it, uh, underneath the hood, both Lake Formation and AWS Glue use the same uh, Glue data catalog. And both IAM and Lake Formation permissions are needed to authorize access to your uh, metadata. So what you see in the picture is uh, some snippets of how the authorization model look with IAM permissions on the far left, and how the authorization permissions looks with IAM as well as Lake Formation on the right-hand side. And we highly recommend that you have coarse-grained IAM permissions and fine-grained Lake uh, Formation permissions. And we'll walk through how uh, that looks like in just a little bit. So in order to maintain backward compatibility with your existing uh, Glue data catalog, uh, Lake Formation has introduced something called a Lake Formation pass-through role. And what that essentially does is it groups all the individuals who have permissions on your Glue into one certain category called I am allowed users. And those users are allowed to still access the Glue data catalog even when you move to Lake Formation. And the reason for that is so that you can continue to work with your existing Glue data catalog. So with that, this is the starting point or the beginning of our demo. And the situation or the scenario we have here is we have a couple of personas here, a Jack uh, developer and a Jill developer. And both of them have access to the catalog. And within the catalog, they have access to specific catalog elements, such as Jack has access to a table called members, whereas Jill has access to two tables called persons and events. Now, this is where we are starting. And this is how your existing scenario or your existing environment might look like. And from here, uh, you, we will want to introduce uh, Lake Formation's new permission model. Let's take a look at how that looks. So I talked about the Lake Formation pass-through role. With the existence of this role, you are able to simply pass through to your Glue data catalog. So uh, the super to IAM allowed principles on all existing metadata objects exist today when you go into the lake formation permissioning model. And so what the service does is it uses an expression to evaluate whether you have permissions. And for that, it uses IAM, which is the, which is the main uh, identity and access uh, authorization mechanism. In addition to that, it also evaluates to see if you have lake formation permission. But because we have this IAM allowed principles uh, uh, created, we are evaluating both of them. And this, this expression, because the IAM allowed users have access to uh, the Glue data catalog objects, always evaluates to true. 
And so the combination of IAM firms and your uh, lake formation pass-through will always evaluate it true. And so, which means that Jill, uh, Jack still has access to uh, the uh, members table as well as Jill has access to persons and, and, and the events table. Now, from here, how do we start upgrading to lake formation permission model? So the first step involved is in granting lake formation permissions. And before even we can do that, we need to see who are the Glue Data Catalog users who are currently using uh, the metadata as well as the data with Glue, right? And in order to do that, uh, you could uh, run a simple query using Athena against the CloudTrail events table, or you could go to the IAM uh, console and also look at the access advisor in there to look at who has permissions on Glue. And the reason we need that is we need those users' uh, uh, identity so we could grant them leg formation permissions. So uh, let me show you how that looks like. So this is a demonstration of uh, how to identify the uh, users who currently have Glue data permissions. So here I have Jack, and I can go into the Jack's uh, uh, I, I, I am console and look at the access advisor, and that lists all the permissions that uh, user Jack has uh, on, on Glue. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can also create a CloudTrail uh, table like that in Athena and run a CloudTrail uh, uh, query to identify all the users who have get table, get database permissions um, on, on the Glue um, service. And once you do that, uh, we will take those users and take those permissions, and we will start giving them permissions So in, in lake formation. And let's take a look at how that looks like. So the way to grant permissions in lake formation is by going to the lake formation console and uh, opening up the data permissions. Let's take a look at how uh, that looks like in real time. So uh, we go to the lake formation permission, data permissions uh, section, and from there we go to the grant permissions. We click on that, we select the user jack, and we provide the permissions for user jack on legislators database. And within that, we give him permissions on membership, and we give him all access on that membership table. And we, tend, we will repeat the same process for the user Jill as well, and Jill will, get, uh, will, will repeat the same process except that she will have access on a different set of tables. And once that uh, process is completed, we will move on to the next, next phase. So this, this pretty much uh, uh, finishes the permission, uh, the, the uh, activity of granting permissions to those two users. Now we have to revoke that lake formation pass-through role because remember, we have created this lake formation pass-through so that you still have access to your uh, Glue Data Catalog objects, the existing ones. We have to cut that uh, thread there. And so in order to do that, uh, there are a couple of things that you could do. Uh, again, the process of revoking the LF pass-through is very simple. It's, it's from, uh, again, uh, the Lake Formation console, and it looks something like this. So you go and uh, invoke the revoke button there, and you identify a principal named I am allowed users. And for that user, you select the database, and you also select all the tables, and then say revoke. And once you revoke, that LF pass-through is no longer existing. And with that, we have cut off ties with the, with the old Glue data catalog. And so before we can uh, proceed with, uh, and there are a couple more steps that you need to perform, which is going into the Glue data catalog settings and making sure that uh, you uncheck both uh, the settings that use only IAM access control for the new databases. And you also make sure that you go to the databases and uh, repeat the process. And once you do that, uh, you will need to uh, do and the third step, which is, remember we, we recommended that you use coarse grain permissions for IAM. And so we'll, we'll take a look at how that looks like. 
So course grant IM permissions means that uh, you are uh, giving a lot more permissions at the IM level and controlling uh, the, the granularity at the lake formation level. So well, your, your, in your glue data permission model, your uh, IM permissions look as, as you see on the left-hand side, which is if you look at the yellow part, which is the resource section, there I have explicitly set permissions for each user to specific databases and specific uh, tables for that user. Now, that will change to what you see on the right, where you are simply uh, specifying the resource uh, as your account uh, IDs and star, and you're giving the appropriate uh, glue API permissions. So once you do that, uh, and let me show you how you can do that. It's a very simple uh, mechanism. You just, again, go back to the IAM console, and you change the permissions uh, to the user uh, by replacing the IAM policy. So here I have the user Jack, and I, um, I have a couple of uh, permissions that are from my old existing uh, Glue environment. So I'm going to go and edit the policy. I am going to change the policy to what it looks like like that, especially the resource section, and then I will save that, and I'm done. And I'll repeat the same process for the user Jill as well. So this is, this is going with the coarse grain permissions for both the users. Once I do that, uh, there's this last step that you need to do, which is lake formation introduced another uh, permission policy called get data access, and you need to uh, use that policy uh, for, you need to add that policy to the users and then register the location. Let's take a look at how that looks like. So the, uh, the get data access policy, IAM policy looks as follows. It allows um, uh, lake formation, data lake uh, access permissions to the user uh, that gets this policy. And once you do that, we will start registering um, the location. So uh, let's go through a, a demo of how that looks like. So again, I'm going back to my user Jack. And the user Jack will have uh, to add permissions. And he will go and attach a policy. And that policy I've already pre-created. And if you look at, I'll, I'm going to show the uh, JSON policy that, uh, that adds the data access permissions to this user, and once you do that, that, uh, that completes step four. And then we have to finally register our data lake location into lake formation. Once we do that, that's when we, we can say that the migration or the path to migration has finished. So let's take a look at how that looks like. So now we go to the uh, lake formation console. We go to data lake locations, register a location there, choose my data lake path in S3. And you can grow. Uh, if you have prefixes, you can select that as well and register that location. And that pretty much are the four vital steps that are required to migrate your existing Glue Data Catalog to a lake formation permission model. You can also optionally lock down S3 permissions. And the S3 permissions is also straightforward. There is a, in the lake formation console, there is a uh, data location section where you can go and lock down S3 permissions. Now, one of the things that you want to remember here is because lake formation is integrated uh, with some of our other services, like such as EMR and, and Spectrum, one thing you will want to be very careful about is uh, lake formation vents credentials for these services that are integrated with it. And because of that, when you lock down your S3 location, you can work with these services, but services that are not integrated with lake formation who will still need access to them will not be able to access that S3 location. So you want to be very careful and mindful of the fact that once you lock down your S3 location, uh, only those services will be able to use uh, your data lake location. 
So uh, that pretty much concludes uh, this demo. I'm happy to take any questions you may have now. Yes. Does any of those things uh, change with the newly announced service for S3 access point? So, uh, so if, if anything is newly announced, uh, the chances are it's not integrated with, with the lake formation service right now. But in the due course of time, if you stay tuned on our website and uh, announcements, uh, we'll keep you abreast of that. Do we have any other questions? Hi, sorry, so just so I'm following correctly, you can remove all your bucket policies and the IAM roles for the user and just give them the lake formation. So you're not, financial. yeah, so if you look at uh, the, the way we walk through the permission model, mm -hmm. there are two things in, in lake formation permissioning modeling. One is the access to the metadata, which is the catalog, and then the actual data, which resides in S3. So the users will still need access to the S3 path where, and by registering the location, you're allowing that to happen okay. underneath it. Any other questions? Is there any other interface to update permissions for users where you can update multiple users at one time or is it one permission at a time? So you can go and select multiple principles uh, uh, as long as you're giving them same type of uh, uh, permissions, uh, specifically on a database or tables, you can choose multiple principles there. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? I think that's it. Thank you very much for attending, and uh, I look forward to your additional questions through uh, website and other mechanisms. Thank you.